In the age of modern satellite technology, traditional cartography is mostly obsolete, but satellites have allowed for in-depth analysis of large stretches of the globe, even parts that are remote or otherwise inaccessible. I want to give you a basic guide to analyzing satellite imagery with some real-world examples. This guide assumes you aren't wanting to pay for some advanced satellite application like Maxar, so we'll be focusing on what you can do with Google Earth. I'll be using North Korea for these examples, since that country is a good example of one only covered with satellites rather than a composite with imagery from aerial surveys. Also, there's plenty of interesting stuff to study in North Korea. First, let's look at one of the simplest techniques, comparing images at different times. Google Earth makes this handy for you by including a slider. Let's say you wanted to confirm rumors about North Korea shutting down Yongbyon, their main nuclear research facility. Looking at recent pictures, there doesn't seem to be much of a tell. There's a partially destroyed building with its smokestack still standing, but the main buildings seem fine. Maybe there's a little bit of overgrown vegetation, but nothing too obvious. Jumping back a few years, we can instantly spot the differences. The buildings are now perfectly clean, there's no random debris on the roof, the roads are clean, there's trucks parked, the vegetation around the buildings has been trimmed back, and it looks like the southern access points have been consolidated into just one. We can also see that the destroyed building is back, but a few new buildings have popped up just past the southern perimeter of the facility. These things confirm, yes, Yongbyon is shut down, or at least mostly shut down, but without examining previous pictures, you would have no idea about this stuff. I will say that the feature is a little finicky on Google Earth, and the image quality really drops off past 2010 or so. It's also worth noting that the exact coordinates can shift slightly due to calibration issues at different times, so make sure you're still looking at the same spot using fixed reference points like roads when you change the date. Next, let's look at how you might evaluate what you're looking at on satellite images. This is some random industrial complex in Suncheon I picked. I wanted to figure out what this place makes, so here's some things I pieced together. First, it's in prime real estate, sandwiched between a river and a railroad. It must be a big producer, since it has two dedicated rail extensions into it. This cluster of buildings are likely the final steps in the manufacturing process, since this is where the rails end, and also where all these conveyor belts and pipes feed into. We can also see some vats around the main building, suggesting some type of liquid, or maybe just water, is used here. At the southern end of the facility, we can see some slag piles, as well as some storage pools for liquid. We can also guess that this isn't toxic or otherwise hazardous, at least in this stage, since it is located upstream from a residential area. There is a concrete berm separating the two northernmost reservoirs, with some sort of installation, maybe a pump, between the two. We can see housing for the workers in the north end of the complex, with buildings with more creative designs, and also courtyards and recreation areas attached, as well as a sculpture or monument. This is likely the main entrance for people, since we can see a typical gate common in North Korean industrial areas here, something absent at the other entrances. It's hard to say if this industrial site is currently functional. There are some rail cars parked, but they're all empty. There also don't seem to be any trucks or cars around. Some unfinished looking structures are also scattered around the area. This particular place is interesting. Looking back on old images, it's been demolished and completely rebuilt at least twice. If you're curious about what it makes, this is a fertilizer factory. But let's back up a bit. How do you know what type of structure you might be looking at? For example, what if you wanted to tell if a building is commercial or residential? Learning context clues is important, like how commercial buildings tend to be on main roads and residential areas are usually on side streets. Commercial buildings might also have loading docks visible and large parking lots. Air conditioning units on the roof are more commonly used in commercial buildings rather than residential. Residential areas are usually where parks and schools are located. Schools can often look like commercial buildings, but with some sort of sports field or other open area attached. Universities and colleges are clusters of buildings with walkways between them. Now let's talk about what most people think of when they hear about satellite technology, viewing military sites and installations. We'll start off with air bases. These are the easiest to spot, owing to the huge runway that is nearly impossible to hide. This is Koksan Air Base in South Central North Korea. All in all, pretty normal military airfield. There's some MiG-21s hanging out on this concrete parking pad, some buildings along the taxiway, probably offices and barracks, 
and a taxiway that goes off into the mountains, probably an underground hangar to protect the planes, all very standard features of a military aerodrome like this. I'll also show you one that's a bit unorthodox, the Kangda Ri Air Base on North Korea's east coast. This one is built partially into a mountain, protecting the aircraft safely underground. This sort of setup isn't unusual with countries that have a concern about their planes being destroyed while on the ground. Switzerland famously has runways built in the mountains and hangars underground, and it's likely North Korea is doing the same here. Next, probably the hardest to spot in a lot of cases, naval bases. Navy bases are tough to spot because they're often interspersed with civilian ships and docks, and also greater effort is taken to conceal ships. Civilian and military equipment is often nearly identical at ports. At Nampo in North Korea, for example, the repairways for military ships look exactly the same as the cranes for unloading cargo from civilian ships. Military ships can be distinguished by things like guns or missile hatches, or in the case of submarines and aircraft carriers, their entire form factor is different from anything else in the water. For submarine bases, you'll also often see launch ramps for them. Naval bases in particular also really like having specialized manufacturing located right there, so assembly halls are sometimes visible. Areas for ships can be distinguished by protective measures, such as torpedo nets or reinforced basins. A little off topic, but I wanted to talk about some oddities I've seen at North Korean naval facilities. Such as this canal that is half blocked with rusted out hulls, this dry dock filled with rusted out hulls, and this coal port filled with rusted out hulls. This seems to be a trend among North Korean docks for some reason. Lastly, standard ground army bases. These aren't really things anymore for the most part. The best you can hope to find is some sort of supply depot or barracks. In the age of drones, satellites, and incredibly long-ranged planes and missiles, you want as little concentrated on the ground as possible. The Korean Peninsula is one of the last places you can really see any bases at all, mostly worked into larger defensive structures along the DMZ. I did manage to track down a more old-school, traditional-looking base on North Korea's northwest coast. There's not much to see here, it's a collection of barracks with some sort of training ground. I hope this has been helpful as a basic outline of what you can do with satellites. Keep in mind, this is only focused on free tools. If you can get your hands on a Maxar subscription or something, you have a lot more power. If you want to read more about North Korea specifically, I would highly recommend 38 North. They write great pieces on North Korea and do professional satellite analysis. You have reached the 651 area code test number in St. Paul, Minnesota for the Minneapolis LATA 628.